What's up, everybody? It's your girl, Erica, from the Classy Climb blog, author of the Smartphone Millionaire book, How to Invest in People, Businesses, and Real Estate from the Palm of Your Hand. If you watch this channel, you know I am a YouTuber who, well, I call myself a full-time YouTuber, who manages $2 million in assets across the United States in trucks and housing. But I brought y'all someone very special on today. Uh, this is someone you guys have probably seen in the past from pictures in Belize, uh, the cacao farm, and also that I've talked about with the coffee farm. He is Hawaiian special, Lane. Introduce yourself, Lane. <laughs> hey, thanks for having me, Erica. Um, so 4,500 rentals under ownership, uh, I don't know, half a bi billion dollars, but um, let's figure out how we can help your folks, right, get started in real estate get some passive income for sure for sure all right everybody as you know on this channel drop your city and state and also drop that question we love having you guys in here the other day we had over 500 people during the live so if it gets up to that many you know i might not be able to catch all the questions so do what you can all right you guys um so lane break it out to him because really you didn't start here you started in was it seattle yeah so i um walked this linear path i was told a lie to go to school, get a good job, work at the job for 40, 50 years. Um, that was how I was kind of, you know, told to grow up, right? Mm -hmm. um, so I became an engineer um, through college, graduated in Seattle from UW, and I bought a house to live in, because that's what everybody says to do, right? Which I don't necessarily agree with. Mm -hmm. uh, bought that house to live in Seattle, 350,000, 20% down payment, because that's what you need to buy a house. And I, the rents I brought in was 2,200 bucks a month and the mortgage was 1,600. So I didn't know anything about rental value ratio, 50% rule. We can talk about that. But all I knew for a young 20 something year old kid back then in 2009 was that was a lot of beer money. And I was like, shoot, if I just keep doing this a few more times, I'll be able to fire my boss and quit the day job. So that's, mm -hmm. that's where it all started. That's where I got the taste of cash flow. I love it. I love it. So both of the things are great because, you know, uh, if you have uh, probably haven't seen it on this channel, I talk a lot about the people in the fire movement, people in tech have a lot more disposable income. It's just not everybody knows what to do with the disposable income. Now, was there seminars or were there any books you read that kind of got you kicked off into that that venture into that mindset? Not, re not really. I mean, I just it was kind of, I'm a kind of like accidental landlord. I mean, mm -hmm. to me, it made sense. Right. Mm -hmm. I mean, Although nobody in my family did this type of stuff. My, my parents always said, don't rent your house out. They'll screw up your house. You know, yeah. that, that was what I grew up with. Um, but I just did it. And, you know, stuff is pretty easy. It's not, you know, you just buy the right property that cash flows. And you kind of do that with a spreadsheet. And you just get better and better over time goes on. And you just keep acquiring more and more properties. It's not a get rich quick thing. But it's a get rich mm -hmm. surely type of thing. Don't get rich quick. Get rich for sure. <laughs> so, um so, so listen, so now you're doing this, you're out here, you're, you're starting to attract more people to your platform and somewhere along that way, I meet you, <laughs> but, um, as you're starting to grow, were you utilizing bigger pockets? Were you putting your message out there on there or on a website? What were you doing? Um, I mean, I think that's a great place to kind of start out. Right. But mm -hmm. you know, like the type of investing I do, I mean, you know, in real estate investing, people think of like flipping houses, wholesaling mm -hmm. houses. I mean, I don't do any of that type of stuff. I'm more passive investor, right? Because mm -hmm. for a lot of folks in my group, like we get paid pretty well, or they're successful business folks like yourself that have a lot of money, right? You know, this is real estate investing. You need money to invest, bro. If you don't have money, you got a money problem and I can't help you with that, right? right. So all this whole selling houses, flipping houses, I don't do any of that. I don't really know how to do that type of stuff. I focus on buy and hold residential real estate and I'm pretty good at that. But, um, you know, I kind of help out people who have good paying jobs to be able to do this passively as their highest and best use. And that's the big thing. You always got to figure out what your highest and best use. Most people mm -hmm. out there are kind of screwing around doing the wrong thing. Either they make a high salary and they're screwing around doing like a $12, $20 an hour task or yeah. the opposite. They don't make that much money, but they're kind of like doing something else. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. So, you know, like a lot of my doctor clients, like why would they want to wholesale houses when they can just do another surgery in the weekend and make 20 G's like that? For sure. For sure. And so you're in Hawaii now, but you were in Seattle and was Hawaii like a dream? Was Hawaii like, I'm going to go live 
where I want? What was Hawaii for you? Well, I, I grew up here, right? So, I mean, home's home, and we all kind of have our own homes where we grew up. Uh, I mm -hmm. always wanted to get back home to Hawaii because I was always freezing my ass off in Seattle, and it was always dark and rainy there. Very. Um, but Hawaii's expensive, right? And mm -hmm. when I moved back, I was still working my engineering job and just pay, you know, jobs pay nothing out here. Like I took like a 30% pay cut. Mm -hmm. um, to me, I don't really care. But like, I mean, you can't survive in Hawaii unless you have passive income. You know, right, right, right. Locals can survive out here to me. Yeah. You know, what's funny is there, there's just a couple of people I know in Hawaii who they're just a group of friends who are like, all refinance their house and now take that money and try to go find some income with that refinanced cash out house. So yeah, they're lucky that they do have like, you know, million dollar home, but you got to make that money work for you. Yeah. And, and I think a lot of people like they need access to this type of stuff, right? If you live in mm -hmm. Hawaii and you know, there's like a Pacific ocean separating you between yourself and good deals. Um, mm -hmm. I don't advocate for anybody buy real estate in Hawaii, California, Seattle, New York, DC. They're all primary markets where the rent to value ratios don't make sense. I mean, they appreciate, but to me, that's gambling. I don't gamble with my money. Yeah. So there, there's a, there's a couple of cities and states you have investments in uh, that you had some single families in that I don't know if you still recommend them, but uh, I think you had what Alabama was one of them. Yeah. So, so after I bought the few properties in Seattle, I realized like you know there's this one percent rent to value ratio rule that you kind of follow. So Seattle is obviously a primary market and it's not going to work. No bueno. No mm -hmm. cash flow there. So I tried to go Birmingham, Atlanta, Indianapolis, and Pennsylvania was where I first bought my first rentals. So around 2015, I had 11 of these single family home rental properties. Mm -hmm. um, but then I realized, you know, single family homes. It's a headache. Are, yeah, it's not, not scalable, right? I mean, with 11 properties, you know, at a few hundred bucks of cash flow each, that's $3,000 a month. And that's cool, right? I'm sure a lot of people will love to have that. But I don't know what American family can survive off three grand a month you're going to need 30 of those houses um and just you know people give a little insight into the passive investor like with 11 rentals i had eviction or two every year some kind of big catastrophe like a tree falls laying on the house or a flood in the basement due to a hurricane or mm -hmm. you know something like that i mean we we have professional property management to deal with this stuff because you and i are investors we don't deal with yeah. these type of headaches we don't deal with tenants yeah, like that's people, that's, people heavy, people heavy. Yeah, it's twenty dollar an hour a task that other people can do for you, and they can take over that liability. But you know, so you have to manage the the manager, right? And with eleven properties, it was a bit of a headache. And with thirty, it's three times that. So this is where I started to join different masterminds yep. and get around more accredited investors. And I realized that most of them invest as a passive investor in private placements and syndications apartment deals and stuff like that so so you're going on this journey you're you're, you're purchasing alabama or Atlanta. you're doing this stuff and then you're like ah, mm, that's enough of that was there a first kind of person you bumped into that you invested in that first apartment with if you're if, okay to disclose that yeah i mean at first i went and did what anybody tried to do i tried to do it myself right um a 30 grand to kind of go in to get the education um the one nice thing is i learned how to underwrite deals right mm -hmm. but i could probably teach that to anybody in a few hours it's mm -hmm. not that hard um but not many people know how to decode the code like they have the, the, the data right which is the profit and loss statements and rentals just like when you're buying any business right you want to see the, the trailing 12 financials um so that's what I look, went and learned. But the thing that was missing for me is I didn't have the partners who had the broker connections. Mm -hmm. you, you can't just wholesale apartments. I mean, maybe if you're going after trash properties, it works. But today I target stabilized assets. So stabilized assets are defined as 90% occupied or more. 90%. This ain't, no, this ain't no fire sale property. And part of the reason we do that is we get we want to get the Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac non-recourse debt. Which Say it one more time. Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac non-recourse that the pretty much the sweet ass loans that the government gives us right three mm percent -hmm. 30 year amortization um you got a lot of guys going after like these kind of like four unit to 50 unit properties you're just competing with the average mom and pop investors you know under right. a few million dollar purchase price we, we try and syndicate so we can get above those guys get to be a 50 or 100 unit or more 
Mm -hmm. um, you know, you hear a lot when you know, 60 units is kind of the stage where you can have a full-time property manager in the office. You know, that yeah. passes in the seat. Try to watch, you have some presence there, which is cool, but you really need to get above 100 units so you can justify that dude that runs around the golf cart knocking out plumbing repairs or HVAC repairs. Um, yes, because I used to be a property manager, so yes, I know. Yeah, so, I mean, apartment complex. <laughs> those third-party like r plumbing repairs or HVAC repairs, those are the killers, right? But when you yep. can bring that in house and do it on salary, and you know, a lot of times the guy in the in the golf cart can knock out like a five hundred dollar toilet repair in mm -hmm. before his first smoke break of the day, and live on the property, so you pay him a little bit less than you would. A, a real, <laughs> uh, we don't know. I don't know. The pens, right? I'm just saying, yeah, the pens. Of, even in the class A ones I worked for, they still had that discount unit to that, uh, our main maintenance guy. Now, it wasn't yeah. free, but it was a discount unit. And the amount of money in return for him, just him alone, the stuff he would fix that you're like, oh gosh, that saves us thousands of dollars every couple months, right? Just thousands uh, in repairs. Yeah. I mean, we've done that before, but you know, Kind of keep it. I mean, our property managers, they kind of run a tight ship, right? It's right. supposed to more mom and pop ish. So mm -hmm. you kind of separate church and state, stuff like that. But yeah, I mean, I, I see a lot of people doing things like that, right? Barring and dealing. You can also have, when we first got started, we had smaller apartments. So we would have like kind of like a community leader, you know, the, the right. you know who they are, right? Like they're the mm -hmm. ones that's always there. They're retired. They've been there for 20 years. They're kind of the watchdog, and sometimes you can give them like a couple hundred bucks discount, and then they're kind of the community advocate. They tell you what's going on, and they might even fix stuff for you here or there. But you know, a lot of that it takes a lot of management. Um, you know, the, you got to get handsy with that, right? Like mm -hmm. it's hard to set up. It's not scalable. Uh, you know, today we kind of focus more on 150, 300 unit apartment buildings. Um, more higher class, B class still, work, so workforce housing. Um, our rents are in the 700 to $1,200 range. We don't go to the high end luxury because, you know, in theory, that's the stuff that gets rocked the boat, right? When yeah. there's a recession, as those people move back to more value based apartments. Mm -hmm. And we're not on the low end. We're not, a, we're not slumlords here. Um, and you'll love this. We are in red states. We don't want to be in the socialist <laughs> California, right? Like, Listen, everybody say, knows. I'm like, not, get out of those states. You're not in, to say anything politically where that's right or wrong, but states. we want to have the rules on our side, right? Mm -hmm. um, so last year you did what? Last two years you did about 18 closings. I can't remember. Is it last year or the year before last year? Um, I don't know. Like, I, I think we're on like deal 30 now. And it's mm -hmm. been like, we started this journey back in like 2017. Mm -hmm. First acquisition. So we've had so everybody a few 2017 these. now. He's he's kicking it. He's kicking yeah, it. Yeah, we have and we years. have some of these like cash out already. I mean, especially because the class C stuff we'd like to unload because they're more headaches. But I mean, yeah, doubled investors' money in two and a half years and one mm -hmm. that just sold last week. Um, yeah, it's phenomenal, right? Not not saying that past performance is an indicator of future success for but, sure. You know, I mean, it's a simple business plan. You go into an asset that's already cash flowing and working and you, the, the rents are already under market by like 50 bucks. And all we're doing is doing like value add We're you know, maybe four to $6,000 of rehab per unit. So change out the flooring, change out the appliances, new paint. That's about it. I mean, you're probably doing way more stuff on your properties, right? Like way more than five grand. That's for sure. So, yes. Yes. We, we, We've been dropped like thirty grand into a duplex in Cleveland, and I and we bought it for thirty. So it's like yeah. we literally rebuilt, you know. So um, yeah. I mean, you're probably making more money on that, but like the way, what we're doing, we're just putting lipstick on a pig, but mm -hmm. to bump the rents up a hundred bucks. But that's enough to double investors in five years. For years. sure. So start 2017, start buying the the apartments, start doing the big deals. But you also have done mobile home parks. Yeah, like. You know, like I think the theme is workforce housing, right? So mm -hmm. under the umbrella of, hey, this country has a population growth. I mean, people are immigrating in. Mm -hmm. um, there's a need for more seven hundred dollar to four twelve hundred dollar rents. Mm -hmm. you know, housing for the people, right? <laughs> um, the way you're saying it's cracking me up, but yes, housing for the people. Yeah. So like. I mean, it just makes total sense, right? I mean, and it's a commodity too um, that people need. 
So mobile home parks are another type of workforce housing. And technically, you know, if you go by the pricing, which is more $500 range, you know, for lot rent, I mean, it's mm -hmm. technically C plus, but you know, the idea is you create the asset that is you know, the, the high end of your asset class. So you mm -hmm. attract the best tenants that can only afford 500 bucks a month, mm -hmm. right? So you're trying to create these smaller communities and, you know, mobile home parks are kind of difficult for institutions to get a hold of, hard to compete. Yep. Um, you don't have all these mom and pop landlords going and buy mobile home parks. So that's the appeal to that. But it's all under the umbrella of workforce housing and investing in things like recession proof assets, right? right? I think the only thing that I'm not a big fan of today is, you know, retail shopping malls or shopping centers. Yeah, they're going to take a bigger hit than most of. Uh, so, so where are your some of your mobile homes located? Mobile home parks located? Uh, Kansas City and down there in uh, kind of near Pensacola on the Alabama coast. People know where that <laughs> is. I mean, if people if people are out there, mm -hmm. you know that a lot of people live in mobile home parks, right? Mm -hmm. so, I mean, if you're living in California, Seattle, all this stuff is likely a culture shock to you. Before I did this, I didn't even know people lived in houses under 300 grand. I didn't know. Yeah, that. I mean, yeah, like, yeah, you're a real culture shock then, because there's like a ton of, ton of the eighty thousand to one hundred fifty thousand dollar mark in like the Carolinas and Georgia and Florida. Like, I think out of our forty, our family's forty rentals, majority of them they bought them for thirty six thousand to eighty thousand. Great houses, brick houses, ranch, three bedroom, one and a half bath. Rent, renting them forever, yeah. people pay. And that's most people price. in America, right? I mean, that's that's middle America, and that's how we kind of cater. South, to. Southeast, I'd say the Southeast. Yeah, even, even yes. Ohio, right? I mean, mm -hmm. we've got some in Cleveland, same thing. Mm -hmm. We've got eight in Detroit and one in Cleveland, and then I have on my personal side several in North Carolina at this point. I have to liquidate one or two for less headache, and then <laughs> trying to get bigger here in Texas. So, um. Man, so if someone asked, are you buying the mobile home park with the trailers or just the lot, like the, the whole thing? So when you, when we're buying this stuff, whether it's apartments or mobile home parks, mm -hmm. you're buying it from more of a, it's a bit of a hodgepodge business plan. Mm -hmm. But the general strategy is to split it from park owned to tenant owned. So that when the tenant screws it up or the hurricane takes it and runs away, it's, well, it's their problem, right? And when mm -hmm. they own the property, the actual, you know, the, the infrastructure, they tend, obviously they tend to take care of it more. But when you right. buy it, it's a hodgepodge, right? It might be 76% mm -hmm. park owned, 11% non, you know, but the overall, the, the general business plan is to move it, which you don't have that kind of play in apartments. Apartments is just straightforward. And then a mobile home park, part of the business plan is selling said units and that helps cash flow which you don't have that in apartments right which one is your favorite at the current time uh i know apartments better so that's <laughs> yeah that's <laughs> yeah i mean yeah when i, I saw blackrock jump in there i said uh oh let will see if lane still is going to do it next year well i mean i think the institutions are starting to see what work you know workforce housing and apartments did during the pandemic i mean prices didn't go down at all in apartments, cap rates stayed the same. Yeah. And to me, like the next year, I mean, I'm not really a crystal ball guy, but you know, Fannie Mae just released something where GDP is going to go up four or five percent for the next few years, starting this summer. I mean, quarter, all signs. I think it's quarter three and quarter four. They're assigned. yeah. I mean, all all signs are pointing to yes, but hey, if not, that's why you pick up stabilized assets that if not would just cash flow, and if things are bad, you just cash flow. Cash flow, cash flow is king, you guys. Cash flow. Uh, <laughs> so out of so I've I've uh, and everybody who's on the email list, we've got about thirteen thousand people on our email list. They'll be seeing uh, you have some really great courses and offerings, like from masterminds, from teachings. I know you just did a virtual mastermind, right? The sixteenth or something like that. Yeah, um, yeah. We normally do the thing in Hawaii, but mm -hmm. obviously with everything going on, but it was pretty cool. You know, we did. I'm big on like community and. Mm -hmm. As opposed to, you know, real estate conferences are pretty lame, right? It's like death. 
very that's dry. That's my PowerPoint. Everybody's going to sell something. Mm -hmm. Like to me, in my world, like I always tell my guys, like your biggest thing that you got to do is build relationships with other pure passive investors. Yeah. Right. That's why, like, you know, that's why you came down to Belize with me. On a tiny me, plane. Oh my God. <laughs> right. I mean, that was a cool group, right? It who was. The it heck, was. Who the heck does that? Other than you, another like more business. All, we all own businesses and yeah. higher net worth people that came on that trip. Um, Lit, yeah, and my room had AC. Woo -woo. <laughs> and full of geckos. <laughs> I was like, oh, I'm so sorry, you guys. I'm sorry about your rooms. But Belize yeah, is I very nice. <laughs> <laughs> but you're from Hawaii, so you should have been already expecting that kind of heat. <laughs> but that was cool, right? Like, that was fun. I mean, Remember the rain? That was cool. Like it was just raining all the time up there. I know. And so that was the cacao farm, you guys. So um, break it out to them a little bit about the cacao farm so they can uh, reference what you're talking about. Yeah. So, I mean, you can buy, I mean, this is just a small part of my portfolio, like under 5%, mm -hmm. maybe 1%. But, you know, I mean, when you're, when you have a boring portfolio that works, you start to go after more trophy assets or fun things that are fun to talk about. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, we bought a, um, I did the coffee farm where you buy a turnkey parcel and they kind of manage it for you, grow the coffee, sell it for mm -hmm. you and just a passive investor. I mean, that's, that's my motto is like, I mean, <coughs> I did like dozens of apartment buildings. I own a small portion of it, but that's mm -hmm. my, that's my portfolio. And I, you know, as a passive investor, you don't do anything. You just kind of do the initial legwork and you're in. Um, so you're diversified over different partners, different geographic areas, different asset classes, and you're just kind of playing, you know, your own personal fund portfolio manager. Mm -hmm. As you guys can see, here it is. The uh, We're making chocolate here at the cacao farm. Um, I have a ton of other pictures. Your, your wife took plenty. I have a ton of other pictures, but this is a good one just to give you an example. We got to see and taste. Um, what the beans look like, what they smell like. I mean, you name it. And that was, I mean, I thought that was great, a uh, great tour, a great thing you could do every year if you wanted to, but I don't even know what Belize restrictions are right now. So um, I thought they were open. Yeah. Yeah. I have to go back again. Yeah. I mean, I definitely want to get like a full acre at this point. I'm like, all right. Okay. Now that I've like looked back more, I'm like, okay, I can get another, I can do another one. That makes sense. I, I thought um, the, co the coffee one was like, that I think that would have been more up our alley because I felt like all of us that went, we we're all like kind of city slickers. Yes, you know, <laughs> and we're in these boots and in the jungle, and it's raining yeah. and sliding a little bit. The coffee Wendy. farms, it's like they're all sparse and it's mm -hmm. like all in rows, and it's a little bit more upscale, like the facilities out there. I mean, we would have liked that. You, or I think we were Martin in the jungle. <laughs> yeah, like we were a little miserable. It was raining, and I'm not gonna lie. I was like, when are we gonna go in and eat some chocolate and you know, eat some brilliant beer? It was fun. It just was. I was like, okay, we're real. Yeah. We're really in the jungle outside. Yeah, we're you know we're typical passive investors. The guys who have the white hard hats that go out like mm -hmm. once and like make we own the whole place. But we don't know what the heck is happening, right? Everybody right. <laughs> the food was great. The fish they had. And again, what Lane's talking about is we do different events. Like here's the, one of my boat parties. Um, I think this was from 2019, not 2020. Yeah, it's 2019 fit photos. So we just like finding great ways for your investors to like get to know you, know, like, trust, and invest. That's, right. that's kind of the, right. the deal. I mean, so, I was on another um, forum the other day and then people were asking, well, how do you, you know, what, what questions should you ask the sponsor, right? The syndicator. And I was like, mm -hmm. look, it's, it's a waste of time. People, I mean, people can book calls with me from their onboarding call. And I'm like, look, I do this every day. I can talk to you in my sleep. I can tell everything you want to hear. Like really, at, like, let me give you some real talk here. Go meet my other passive investors and go here, build organic relationships with them. That's the only way you're going to figure out who's real out here. I mean, there's a lot of shysters in this business sure. and everybody's good at marketing. Everybody has a podcast. Everybody, mm -hmm. I mean, podcasts are just marketing tools these days. I mean, when Erica and I did it, we we're the OGs. We we're just doing it. For the <laughs> of it. But yeah. like everybody's Enjoyment. doing it. Yeah. Everybody, it's a side motive these days. And like, you just can't, 
tell these days unless my golden rule is like I'll I'll invest with somebody only if I know somebody personally that I've already had a relationship with, like Erica. And like, hey, did you invest with that person? Did you put in fifty grand with them? What happened? You know, like that's that's the power of my network and that's what I rely on today. But when I first started, I didn't have that type of network and that's why I lost good at like my first deal, I lost like 40 grand. Uh, people can read about that at um, simplepassivecashflow.com slash fail. And the reason why I just didn't have a network to be able to vet the sponsor. They told mm -hmm. me everything I wanted to hear. They had a website, you know? Uh, yeah, that can be. And that's the thing I always tell people, you can come by my office. I'm in here right now. You can come <laughs> look at our books on our shelves or our accounting. You can do all that good stuff if you want to. Um, we're here, we're, you know, we're real people. And, and, and that's really the, what you should be looking for is someone that's consistent. You can, they're not like an invisible person you saw them one time and you never see them again. Uh, that kind of thing. So, so people now you have on your website, a long list. Let me see if I can get back to it. Um, and that's kind of like, I love that on the website. I don't know if it's, I know you've been updating and doing cool stuff, but on the website, you have a list. If you guys go here, and, and again, everybody, I'll have it in the emails, and I'll also have it on here in the description. But if you go to his website, and if it'll let me, computer's tripping. Um, there you go. If you go to the website, and it has the start here button, right? So his start here, boom, it looks like this. Good place um, to start. Good place to start. Newbies, accredited investors, right? It'll ask you some questions. It'll give you the rollout, show you lane. Uh, I love this little turtles, right? <laughs> Turtle shells. Yeah, um, you know that stuff will be good friends. Okay, and then uh, it, again, it, really a lot of great information here. It, he he does a really great job on this. Trust me, like I want people to come to me and be educated. I don't want you to be like, here's my money, go run away, go run with it. Like I want you to know what I'm doing, why I'm doing it, what's the risk, what's the returns. Um, <laughs> What is that? that was That's the 506 it. Club, right? D506 Club. Oh, I see it now. Okay. That's and my, then. That's how I know pay. I don't, I never paid any taxes last year because the real estate gives me all the passive losses. Boom. Do y'all hear that? I mean, there's a lot on this page. You can go check a lot of it out. But um, if you click on here, um, so it's like he has a passive investor oscillator and mastermind. And also he has a free e-course. Uh, and he also has some other e-courses that if you guys are on the email list, you'll see it. There's like 13,000 of you on the email list. So some of y'all see stuff, some of y'all don't, but I want to double check. So right here, if you want to, I'm trying to see where the link where it says all the different things. Do you want to ask questions uh, maybe, about? Maybe. Is this one? Uh, I, I would say like. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's this one, this one, this one. Okay. So if you look on here on his Hulu, how do you say that? The Hulu? Hui. Hui. The Hui deal the pipeline. Um, I've pointed this out before, but I want you guys to understand like. These are just all the investment opportunity type ways you can do. You got private money lending, turnkey, non-performing notes. And again, this is stuff that interests you. And if you don't know what some of these things are, go Google them before you would you know, call people. But wholesaling properties, rehab, mobile home parks, hotel slash resort property, office buildings, retail centers, self-storage, which I'm getting a great self-storage here in Texas, but we'll talk more about that off camera. Industrial buildings and warehouse, or real estate development projects, Developable land, <clears throat> farmland, raw land, oil and glass. You know, I'm from North Carolina, but I'm trying to say oil, um, precious metals and gems, fine art, cannabis, foreign uh, and startup businesses, operating businesses, life settlements, assisted living, senior housing and diversified fund of private placements. Yes, that was a lot. But I want you guys to go check this out on your own and go read it. I'm going to copy this link. Well, actually, I, actually, I better not. I think I have my affiliate link I'll put in the chat. <laughs> I have several links I can put in the chat. But check this out. Again, all these pictures, there's people behind it. I've, I've ate, ate dinner with this guy. I've seen him multiple times uh, in Dallas, uh, in Belize. He's a real person. A real person. And again, 2017 is not that long ago. And that's why I want you guys to understand. If like, you immerse yourself in opportunity and with the right people, you learn more. So... Um, so you guys, if you have more questions, drop it in here. I don't want to take all lanes day, <laughs> but what are some of your hopes towards investing or some of the states you're looking to invest in? Cause I know you love Dallas cause Austin is crazy prices right now and will be for the next future. 
Yeah, yeah, Austin kind of doesn't work these days for cash flow. I mean, a great market, right? But you know, my buy box, my strike zone is cash flow first, right? And then, then is it a good deal? But yeah, like as far as state or far as cities or emerging markets, Phoenix, Dallas, Houston, eh, kind of San Antonio, uh, Atlanta. We love Huntsville. Huntsville, Huntsville Alabama. Alabama. Man, people love it. It's it's blowing up on all the. We've been in there since 2017. It is finally hit the top of the top tertiary market list. Yeah. Um, we're a little concerned since now it's starting to get a lot of press, but we already got the stranglehold. We have over like 700 or 900 units there. Um, well, have you seen there's that couple that um, they literally Huntsville got so popular. I don't know if you guys know what show I'm talking about, but it's like love and real estate or yeah, something. Yeah. It's um, like a, it's like love and, marriage. love and marriage. Somebody yeah. put it in the comments. I know. Y'all I, know put it, I put it in on, on my website. I was like, look, is this not like super clear? Like this is like the new Housewives of Atlanta up in yeah. North Huntsville. You should have you should have been on camera or something. You should have been <laughs> like, yes, I'm all up in here. Um, yeah. It, but real. that's how crazy it's growing. <laughs> and even some of the wholesalers, like uh, real estate disruptors, uh, Stephen Tran, man, he's had several people from Alabama up on that show, from yeah. especially for the Huntsville, Alabama area. I mean, go look, just Google like Birmingham and Huntsville population. And I think Huntsville has overtaken Birmingham as the most populated city right now in the state. What's crazy about it, uh, and I'm sorry to do a negative story, but my mom was driving her BMW from Birmingham, a uh, um, military post off base kind of thing there to Huntsville and she got a flat tire and in between going there and the, the, the tow guy was like, you're good. You have no flat tires. Keep going. Don't stop in this part of Alabama. Keep going. <laughs> <laughs> that was um that movie, right? With the, like the black woman engineers from NASA. I think that was, that was Huntsville. Uh -huh. right? mm -hmm. So yeah. yeah, it's, it's, it's crazy. Um, Justina said, do the investments function as REITs with you? No, we do not like REITs. REITs are bad because the REITs are just like, <laughs> they're just bastardized versions of mutual funds. Like, they really right? are. They're the same thing. So REITs are ran by institutions. And here's the difference, guys. Like these investments, the private placements, we're not, we're not institutions. We're not mom and pals. We're kind of in the middle, right? Mm -hmm. So with, we're not institutions who have like all this overhead, all these fancy buildings that we have to pay, which ultimately comes from investors. And this is what frustrates me about mainstream investing, like your mutual funds and all this type of stuff is a good portion. I would say like a third to a half of all your money that you're making is going to fees. When I was like buying a rental property, I mean, if you guys own rental properties, you guys know that you're making like almost like 30% plus a year yeah. with, with yes. mortgage pay down, tax benefits, cash flow appreciation. And I was looking at my stocks like eight to 10%. What the heck? Who stole my money? Well, it's the institutions in Wall Street's taking all your money as hidden fees. I don't mm -hmm. care what your expense ratio is 0 0.005. That doesn't matter. It's all the hidden fees that they're not putting in there. And REITs, they're just mutual funds that happen to invest in real estate. Mm -hmm. So yeah, we are kind of like a REIT without all the robbing your money blind with all the fees. Fees, fees you to death. So so I, I just want to clarify, say that again for the single family housing, that return of rent percent is like close to 30%. Yeah. I mean, go to, you know, I have like a white, really boring <coughs> video when I go on the whiteboard and do all the math for you in like five mm -hmm. minutes at simplepassivecashflow.com slash returns. But yeah, if you don't believe me, go and look up that video. I mean, that's why we do real estate. We buy leveraged properties with good debt and you get the cash flow. The tenant pays down your mortgage. You get the tax benefits. And hey, if you get lucky, the property appreciates four to one if you're using leverage. It's a no brainer. I love it. I love it. The <clears throat> So that's single family housing, 30%. When it comes to apartments, it's closer to what percents would you say? Um. I mean, I, I would say like for most passive investors, they're looking to kind of double their money in like five to six years, mm -hmm. you know, but you know, every deal is different, right? Some outperform, some a little bit less than that. Um, that's why you diversify, right? Like, so mm -hmm. I tell a lot of my investors, don't put any more than five, 10% of your net worth into any one deal. You're right. in multiple, multiple deals. So, okay. And on the... Oh gosh, I had another question. I'm trying to look for it. Okay. So, 
So, okay. So if somebody says, hey, Lane, I want to work with you. And thank you, Mr. McCoy, for the $20 cash app. We see it in there. Thank you guys for cash apping. Thank you for super chatting and supporting the, the network. We appreciate it. Um, so someone says, hey, hey, Lane, I got 20 grand or I got 50 grand. Let's start with 20. I got 20 grand. We're going to do three scenarios, 20 grand, 50 grand, 100 grand. Lane, I got 20 grand. I want to invest with you. What do, is there any way I can work with you? No, not for 20 grand. We don't deal with that anymore because it's too much okay. of a pain in the ass. And um, if you only have 20 grand, you probably should invest anyway. You should. Your net worth is likely under a quarter million dollars. And if that case, do what I did from 2009 to 2015. Go learn about turnkey rentals to get mm -hmm. started. Uh, go to my website. Go to the turnkey rental guide, simplepassivecashflow.com slash turnkey. The free guide right there for you. There are some e-courses and I'm sure Eric will share the links with later that those are, you know, See if you need it, but go after the free guide and go listen to maybe my first 12 podcasts that were back in 2016 when I was buying single family homes to educate yourself. But um, yeah, you know, if, you, if you're more of an accredited investor and you're looking to jump in, we have to go through an SEC process of vetting investors and building a relationship with them. So sign up for the, the deal club on the website and, um, you know, this is kind of organically build a relationship right i mean i know all my investors personally i don't just i don't do the thing where i just send out random ads and kind of fish for investors mm -hmm. um, i like educated investors that kind of know a thing or two because deals you know there's no there's no guarantee right right there's always risk involved and we want they lose money. investors yeah. yeah people never want to hear that though but yeah, we live, we learn, you know, pay, we pay the, we pay the toll and we keep going. All right, Lane, I've got $50,000. Can I work with you? What can I work with you with? Um, check out the deal club, simple .com club and check out these free syndication guide at simple .com syndication. Mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah, sign up there and yeah, let's uh, get an onboarding call done and get to know each other a little better. See what I can do to help too. You know, I do a lot of family office consulting. Um, the, the deals is one thing, right? The deals allow you to unlock passive activity losses via cost segregations. Um, you can learn more about that at my tax guide, simplepassivecashflow.com slash tax. But this allows you to pay less taxes to invest more, create that harmonious cycle there, but then also unlock other wealth building strategies such as infinite banking and other legal, um, cool legal things you can do. Um, All right. This is, I, I realize that the wealthy do things very differently than the average person, but it's not that, it's not, it's not something that anybody can't do. It's just the, all the dog buzz is just kind of taking us all the wrong way. I mean, it's almost like it's an engineered system to get us all working for 40, 50 years. Right. So I, I will just say, I went to, um, I'll just say and call it a mastermind. And so they were talking about how $30 trillion is exchanging wealth transfer over the next eight years. But 30% of it is going to family offices. And uh, it also talked about how a lot of times if you look at the teachers union, you look at the firefighters union, they're trying to get at least minimum 4% returns on their money, but they can't get in stock in real estate because real estate is so competitive. And then they, they have a hard time with the hedge funds and then they're looking for deals. They're looking for equity. They're looking for companies, they're looking for businesses. And it was just super interesting like just watching yeah. the whole thing and like, that's a sad thing right the poor mm -hmm. teachers union they, they, they can't <laughs> yeah. get access to those more exclusive yeah. deals so what do they do they go buy a shitty REIT, right like that's the retail investments is what these guys go after i mean it's just like shopping at nordstrom or newman markets mm -hmm. likely if you're listening to this you don't shop there right because it's like mm -hmm. it doesn't make sense the same product but it's just some kind of up extra markup yeah so the um because honestly, when we when we went to Belize, I think it was like 20, 24,000 for uh, the acre at the time for the cacao farm. Mm -hmm. And I think for coffee was what? More or less. I bought it, I think, when I was like, four, it was 14 or something. Right. It was Mine not, said like 19 on it. Yeah, but that, back then it was like, they were like worked parcels or more like hodgepodge parcels. Mm -hmm. I bought the hodgepodge one because <laughs> it was cheaper. <laughs> Okay, for sure, for sure. So the, sorry, I'm putting someone in timeout. Okay, anyway, <laughs> so along those lines, and someone here said, would it be best to buy land and put individual mobile homes on it? 
or a whole mobile home park. I would say if you're getting started, just go buy a single family home rental. You guys are complicating this stuff too much. You're like <laughs> not gonna do anything anyway. Right? Yeah. It, like go if your net worth is under like a hundred grand, two hundred fifty grand, just go buy a single family home. Right, right, right. Uh, I mean, again, if someone, I see this, I see this question right here. If someone's willing to take twenty five grand for you, they're likely to be a desperate syndicator looking for your money. It happens. It happens. There's some people building it up, but I hear what you're saying. I would, I, I would be very wary of somebody's like willing to take your twenty five G's for his private placement. For sure. Well, you know, the crazy part off this channel alone, off the power of this network, we've had maybe out of. I'd say out of 152 people I have different contracts and deals with, we've had out of 152, maybe 45 of them do over a hundred grand with us. So, I, I mean, we've got some really, we've got some great people on here on this yeah. channel. Yeah, I mean, if you're There's legit. Range, I always tell people if, there are a range of people on this channel. Yeah, if, if you're legit, channel. like Erica, right? You got like people lining up with, can write stroke big checks. There's no, it was, there'd be no reason why you would work with somebody. Oh, can I invest five thousand dollars? No, it's just the headaches, the administrative, and that tax return, right? But you know, build a relationship, right? I think that's kind of another way of going about it too. Yeah, getting your foot in the door. So Melissa, yeah, you got your foot in the door with them. So let, let them work that deal and see what it what Good happens luck. out of it. Stop. <laughs> <laughs> Melissa's an attorney, so she she knows she'll get them if it goes wrong. Uh, <laughs> so, but yeah, so. Looking out for this year, everybody. You heard what we talked about on his site. Again, check out his site. Don't take my word for it. Anybody I bring on the channel, you know I've verified them or I've worked with them. So yeah, and, yeah. and run the numbers yourself. Um, download my free analyzer at simplepassivecashflow.com slash analyzer and run the numbers yourself. Numbers don't lie, people do. Someone said Kevin Woods asked, would it be better to buy just a single family home than a duplex? I'm just trying to figure it out because I've been looking for duplexes in the Midwest. And the Midwest is very cheap. So, I mean, it just depends. Um, it kind of depends where your net worth is. That's Lane is a, is a I'm, I'm going to call you engineer just because I call everybody an engineer, but Lane's an engineer. So he's like, buy the numbers. <laughs> What's yeah. your numbers? What's your, what is your positive negative? What does it look like? I got um, flow charts. <laughs> but yeah, I want y'all to go on this website. I want you to check it out for yourself. Definitely, if you feel like this is in your lane, get on the phone call with them. Fill out their forms. Get the information. But yeah, Kevin Woods, everybody who's asking these questions, it's all about returns. So again, just doing simple math. I just always go simple math. If I've got 50K and I put 50K in a truck and the truck's going to turn around and perform maybe 48,000 to 50K this year, what's the percentage return on that, right? If I go put money down on a rental property in Birmingham, Alabama for, you know, 20K down and over the course of a year, I get a thousand dollar rent check every month. These are just things you, there's calculators that he has on his website that are very helpful. Uh, I'm a cash flow, cash flow, cash flow person just as I'm building up. But yeah, my goal this year is to take lump sums of cash and put it into apartments and put it into syndication. So laying somebody out I work with and working with in the future. So that's why I brought him on the channel. Plus he has just great information. Was there anything else you wanted to leave us with Lane? Where's all the uh, internet places they can find you? Uh, yeah, they can go to my podcast at Simple Passive Cashflow, Passive Investing, and they can go to my website, simplepassivecashflow.com. For sure, for sure. Everybody Whoa. check it out. Listen, he's got to run here. We're at the top of the hour, but uh, I want to thank everybody who came on here and definitely go check out his website. <laughs> he's doing the wave. All right, you guys. <laughs> all right, bye Lane. Okay, everybody, hope that was informational for you. Hope you got something out of it. We gotta run. I gotta eat my lunch. It's been sitting over here getting cold. Definitely go check out the website, you guys. Later.